the propositions regarding the angles of circles deal mainly with chords and tangents. First, some definitions of uh, the anatomy of circles. The first one that we have is here. This thing that makes up the circle, the boundary of the circle, that is called the circumference. The word uh, circumference comes from the prefix circum which means around. For example, circumnavigate means to navigate around something. Uh, circumvent means to go around a topic or something. So circum means around. Circumference means around this thing. Next comes chord. A chord is a line that joins two points on the circumference. So when these two points on the circumference are joined, we can call this line a chord. And another part is that when we have part of a circumference, when we have this point and this point, the joining of these points are called the chord, but this portion of the circumference that is cut out, that portion is an arc. So you would notice the chord is this length, the straight path from one point to the other, and the portion that cuts out of the circumference, that one is called the arc. Next, if we have a chord that passes through the center of the circle, so uh, if this is the center, then if we have a chord, uh, that means a line joining of two points of the circumference, when that passes through the center of the circle, we call that chord the diameter. So if we have another circle over here, and if we have a chord that passes through the center, that chord has a special name. It's the diameter of that uh, circle. Half the diameter is the radius. So it means from center to circumference, this length is the radius. And it is the same throughout. No matter where you take from the center to the circumference, it is the same throughout. So that is the radius. Next is the tangent. A tangent is a line that intersects the circle at exactly one point. So if this is the point where we have a tangent drawn like this, so this is a tangent because it intersects the curve at exactly one point. Now if it had intersected the a circle at more than one point, it would not be a tangent. If we have a situation like this, this is the circle and we have a line that is intersecting at two points, that is not a tangent. Another uh, important part is, if you have a chord of a circle that is extended, so if this is a chord and the chord is extended outside the circle, that chord is called a secant. So that's the secant. That is, a chord is extended. So the most important uh, definition at this moment is chord and tangent because the angle proposition of circles deal with them. So let's take a look at the first angle proposition. So we have a circle and there is a chord here. So this is the chord to the circle. And the angle that the chord makes at the circumference, this is the angle that the chord makes at the circumference. We call the angle the chord subtends at the circumference. Now there can be another angle subtends at the circumference. As a matter of fact, there can be many angles circum. Uh, uh, made at the circumference. Doesn't matter, each and every of these angles are equal. Any angle subtended at the circumference by the same chord, as long as the length of the chord is fixed, meaning as long as we are referring to the same chord, any angle subtended to the circumference by the same chord, they are equal. So, the first rule the chord proposition is angle made 
by the same card at the circumference it has to be the same side of the circumference circumference that means it has to be in the same segment when we have a circle and a chord the chord breaks down the circle into two segments so this is a segment and this is another segment a minor segment and a major segment so as long as the angles are on the same segment the all the angles are equal so angle made by the same chord at the circumference are equal so that is the first important proposition now this thing is also true for same arc it doesn't have to be the same chord same chord or same arc they're both the same it could be like this you have this and the chord is not joined but the angles are like this made anyway at the circumference so that would also be true we don't have to join the chord all the time this is the arc and we can say in that case angle made by the same arc they are all equals. In that case, this angle, this angle, this angle would be equal. So, let me demonstrate. So, when we have this two angle, this angle, doesn't matter where we put this. As long as the length of the chord or arc, in this case it's an arc, it's fixed, the angle would be the same no matter where you take the circumference. So, here if it is 32 degree, it will be 32 degree anywhere. It doesn't matter the length would be the same this would also be 32 degree because it's also made by the same arc or chord so it would always be the same it would be fixed for that particular chord but if you change the chord you would see that the the angle would be changing also so as this arc length is changing the angle is also changing but for a fixed particular uh, chord or arc that angle at the circumference would be the same so this is 30 degree throughout this is the same so for one particular chord the angle at the circumference is always the same the next proposition states that the angle that a chord so we have this chord the angle that the chord makes at the center it must be a center that angle is double than the angle made at the circumference that means if this angle at the circumference is x the angle made at the center is double on the other hand we can also say the angle at the circumference is half the angle compared to the angle at the center either way it is correct so that is the second proposition regarding angles so angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference now one thing is very important it doesn't really matter how it appears for example it might appear like this so this angle is twice x and if this is drawn here at the circumference this has to be x doesn't matter how it is drawn and remember the first proposition anywhere at the circumference each and every angle subtended by the same chord or arc they're all equal so it doesn't matter whether it looks like as if here even then it is half angle the relationship is half angle at the circumference double angle at the center so that is the idea and this is also true if the two points are not joined and it's just an arc so if you have at the center so this would be twice and this would be half of it so we can demonstrate it here so we have an angle here at this at the center this is given center and any angle here is going to be half of that so if this angle is 130 then this angle is 65 half of that and it doesn't matter because at the circumference every single angle subtended by the same arc or chord is always the same so even if it is here if this is 130 then this would be 65 but if this length is changed suppose to 100 then this would be half would be 50 because the arc length or the chord length has changed now so no matter what happens at the circumference the 
the angle would be 50 degree as long as it's the same chord or arc. The next proposition deals with cyclic quadrilateral. So if we have a quadrilateral inside a circle, so it has to touch the circumference. So it, when that happens, the four points of the circumference, that means the opposite angles of the cyclic quadrilateral, they're supplementary. So x plus y is 180 degree. Then again, if we have this angle P and this angle Q, then P plus Q equals to 180 degree. They're supplementary. So they're called cyclic quadrilateral. In, in a cyclic quadrilateral, the sum of the opposite angles is 180 degree. So sum of the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral is 180 degree. So that's the rule. So when we have a quadrilateral inside a circle, the sum of the opposite angles of a, a cyclic quadrilateral is 180 degree. And there's another rule uh, that we have here. If we have a circle and there's a diameter, that diameter will make 90 degree. So we have the circle and if this is a, if we know that this is the diameter of the circle, it has to pass to the center, then the diameter will make 90 degree at the circumference. So that's the final proposition regarding the angles of chords. So the diameter makes 90 degree at the circumference. So that's the final proposition regarding the chords. Now we can see this here about the cyclic quadrilateral where we have this angle. If this angle is 75 degree, that would be 105 degrees. So that the sum of the opposite angles is together 180 degree. And no matter how you change this, since the angle for a particular chord is the same, so this would always be 75 degree this is 105 degree then for this particular chord it is also same so together they would be 180 degree now let's take a look for the other ones so here this is 83 degree this is supplementary together they would 180 degrees so if you change this so so that's how some of the opposite angles of a uh, cyclic quadrilateral they're together 180 degree now the propositions regarding tangents so when we have a tangent drawn to a circle so if this is a tangent drawn to a circle, then the radius and the tangent would make 90 degree. So that's the first proposition regarding tangents. So tangent and radius make 90 degree. Meet at 90 degree. So that's the first proposition. So we can see it here that it doesn't matter how you change the position of the tangent and the and the radius it would always be 90 degree so this is so this is the proposition that says it doesn't matter where it is it would always be 90 degree at any point on the uh, circumference of the circle the tangent makes 90 degree with the radius of the circle the next proposition says that if we have a common two tangents drawn from a common point so one is here and the other is here then the two tangents this length and this length they are equal and we know that the center from the center uh, this makes 90 degree because the radius and tangent makes 90 degree and this also makes 90 degree because the radius and tangent makes 90 degree so this is equal to this because they are the radii of a circle if we join a line from here these two triangles would be completely equal to each other. They would congruent. For example, this angle would be equal to this angle and this angle would be equal to this angle. So, so common tangent drawn from a single point, they would be equal in length. So this can be demonstrated here. So if we have a common tangent at the point A, so what we can see that this length, if this is 5 centimeter, this length would also be 5 centimeter. 
Now we already know that the radius and the tangent makes 90 degree and this radius and this tangent will also make 90 degree and the angle over here and the angle over here they are equal the angle over here the angle over here is equal so these are equal and since this is a radius this length and this length will be equal anyway so for a for a uh, from a particular point when we have two tangents drawn it would always be equal in length now if we change the positions of the tangents then what would happen the lengths would be different but ultimately they would be equal so let me show you here if I increase this now the length is 7 centimeter 7 centimeter the angles over here is 18 degree 18 degree the angle here is 72 degree and 72 degree but they are ultimately equal to each other the triangles are congruent if I reduce this then again the angles are equal over here and over here and the tangents are also equal in length so when we have a point uh, external point and two tangents drawn so they would be equal to each other now the most important proposition uh, regarding tangents is the alternate segment theorem the alternate segment theorem so the alternate segment theorem states that when you have a tangent drawn to a circle and a chord meets that tangent then the angle that the chord and the tangent makes is equal to the angle that the chord makes at the circumference so that means the angle that this chord and this tangent meet suppose it is x then this would also be x and if we look at it from the other side from the right hand side the angle that this chord and this tangent makes that would also be equal to the angle that the chord makes at the circumference so now if you take a look over here so we have this this is the tangent and the tangent and the chord AB they make the angle over here 42 degree now that means this chord AB will make an angle at the circumference and the angle ABC would also be 42 degree and remember since the angle by a single chord AB at the circumference would always be the same no matter where it makes that's the first proposition regarding chords angle at the circumference by the same chord are all equal and for this particular uh, setup of the tangent and the chord the angle would be equal now this is also true from the other side if this is 70 degree this would also be 70 degree and if you change this the other angle and other the angle between this chord and the tangent would be changing but for this particular setup it would always be 72 degree it would not be different remember this at the same time if I change this angle C over here the angle between this part AC and the tangent would change but for this particular angle it would always be the same so the idea is when you have a chord and the tangent the angle between the chord and the tangent is equal to the angle at the circumference made by that particular chord so the propositions regarding the chords are so when we have a chord and the angle made from the same arc or same chord they are equal every part of the circumference so these are all equal then when we have a chord or an arc then the angle at the circumference whatever angle that is the angle at the center would be double then when we have the diameter is the chord then the angle at the circumference is 90 degree then when we have cyclic quadrilaterals they are supplementary some of the opposite angles together they would be 180 degree then the tangent propositions when we have a radius and a tangent they meet at 90 degree when we have two tangents drawn from the single point then they are equal to each other and since the radius and the tangent meets at 90 degree if we form a triangle over here this angle equal to this angle and this angle equal to this angle when we have a tangent and a chord the angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle that the chord makes at the circumference and this is known as alternate segment